We are trying to find the uh, absolute uh, minimum and maximum of this graph, and we're on the closed interval between negative 2 and 2. And I've got the graph here uh, drawn out. And as you can see, here's my negative 2 and 2. And so approximately about this point on the graph, between this point and this point here. Now we can see on the graph that the maximum is occurring about here. It's a little sketchy between these two, but uh, my guess is it's probably this one here. And uh, to actually find this, we're going to take a negative 2 and plug it directly into the function and get our y value out, and then plug 2 directly into the function and get uh, our other y value out. And then somehow we've got to find this point. And that's uh, when we're going to use calculus to do that. Because at this point is where the, remember, the uh, slope of the tangent line is 0. And when we're trying to find the slope of tangent lines on our curve, that means that we must take the derivative. But uh, first things first, and I like to just plug the uh, endpoints in first. And so let's just uh, start that. And so we're going to test f of negative 2, plugging that directly in. And so we have negative 5 times negative 2. And that's going to be squared. So you're going to have to remember what the function was up there at the top. Minus 2 times negative 2 plus 8. And once we wind through all that, we should get negative 8. Now, we're going to evaluate the other end, and that's at f of 2. So negative 5 times 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus 8. And we work through all that, and we should get negative 16. Now, to find uh, the slope of the tangent line, when uh, the slope is 0, we're going to have to figure out what this x value is. And to do that, we're going to take the derivative, first off, so f prime of x is equal to negative 10x minus 2. All right, so the slope is 0. And now in this equation, we need to solve for x. So by playing... Uh, moving negative 2 over to the left, or you're really adding 2 to both sides. All right, 2, and then negative 10, x, and then multiplying through by negative 1 tenth. And we tend to get in habits and do things like this, but it's the same thing, dividing both sides by negative 10, but you really remember you're multiplying through by negative 1 tenth to both sides. Therefore, x is equal to negative one-fifth. Now, remember that this critical uh, value here, this negative one-fifth, must be in our closed interval. And between negative two and two, that negative one-fifth must be in here. And uh, it is. It's lying somewhere in here. And so now, we're going to find f of negative one-fifth. So we have negative five times negative one-fifth squared minus two times negative one-fifth, right, and then plus eight. And uh, we work our way through all of this. 
either by hand or using a calculator and uh, I've already got it worked out so I'm just going to write this 41 over 5 which is approximately 8.2 and now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to compare we have negative 8 negative 16 and 8.2 and so as we can see that the smallest is negative 16 and the largest is 41 over 5 and so I'll write this down here that our absolute maximum is occurring at 41 fifths well no that's not exactly right negative one-fifth forty-one fifths so that'd be the point on the graph and then the absolute minimum look here it was a negative 16 so 2 negative 16 2 negative 16 and uh, we can clearly see that um, by looking at our graph that the largest value out and then at 2 the smallest and that concludes this problem